Hey, hey, Solid Mustang coming at you here. How's everybody doing? Hey, I want to do a special quick shout out to Marty um, DeLeon. I hope I said that right. Um, he made a comment on my uh, review of the 2015 Ford Mustang V6 package. Good car, they just need to updo the tech on the inside. But he made a great comment to me, said I had a perfect voice, I should be in radio or something. Keep up the good work. Something along those lines. Um, Marty, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. That really that helps me out, man. That made my day. Um, and also, I do appreciate the constructive criticism when it comes from people. I have one person tell me I talk too fast. So I tried to tone it down. And I went back and listened to a couple things, which I typically don't do. One, it's hard to listen to yourself. You never quite sound the way you thought you sound. Uh, sounds odd, but it's true. And, um, but I did find I do sometimes talk fast. Mostly it's because I'm trying to get a lot of information, you know, cram packed. And if you do these things, if you ever do a commentary on, on YouTube, you'll find out what I mean. But either way, both types of comments, um, criticism, compliments, they all help. So. For all you people who have commented, thank you, and special thanks out to Marty for such a nice compliment. I really do appreciate it. So let's talk about things coming up. Let's start there. Games coming out here in the near future. Let's talk about, like, right now, like, uh, Project Cars just came out. Don't buy it yet. Let me review that for you, because I, I got it. I was really looking forward to it, and I'm having some trouble with it. So, hang tight. I'm going to do a review on it. I should have that to you probably tomorrow, if not the next day. Um, I'm going to see if there's an update or something like that for it. I've contacted somebody in it because uh, I'm having all kinds of trouble getting the cars to do what they need to do to go around the track. So, it's not too good for a racing game. Um, but it's pretty cool. I mean, you got go-karts in there and stuff like that. like these super karts all the way up to top-end race cars. So... Um, ton of tracks on there too the other thing coming out here i believe in a week is destiny house of wolves house of wolves looks really good you're going to start you know working for the queen she's going to cash in that favor she said she would i'm hoping i get to shoot her brother but who knows maybe he's just the overprotective brother and he ends up cool who knows but i'd still like to shoot him um so I'm looking forward to that with Destiny, just also for the fact that Destiny is a good game, but it's boring at this point. You know, it's just, eh, they got to do more to keep it fresher and stuff like that. They really got to build more. I know they're supposed to come out with Comet or whatever it's going to be, and that's going to be a huge expansion, but that doesn't come out to November, so that doesn't help me much. They need to come out with these things a little more often. And they said House of Wolves was ready to go, I think over a month ago, a month and a half ago when they announced it. It might even been longer. And, um, I don't know. It's just, mm, they need to come out with more often. That's all I got to say. We'll just leave it at that. What else is coming out? Well, E3 is coming up, so we're going to find all kinds of stuff in about a month. Um... E3, I think, is going to be really multiplayer based. You look at a lot of things going on. You look at um, the way Black Ops 3 is coming out. You got your uh, Star Wars coming out here. You've got Halo 5 coming out. You got a lot of games coming out. I really think there's going to be some some more video on what the multiplayer is going to give you. Especially when it comes down to Battlefront 3, Star Wars, and Black Ops 3. Those two are coming out a week apart from each other in November. Um, November 12th for Black Ops 3, and November 17th. So five days, uh, that's for Star Wars. Five days apart, and that's not a lot. So... You know, it's just going to be really interesting to see how these two promote themselves. Um, obviously, Star Wars has already had a big promotion. They're coming out same time their movies. I think comes out a couple weeks later. Big hype, big time Star Wars. 
you had to figure that was coming. There's going to be a big hype for Black Ops 3 because it has not been perceived very well. Um, that whole jumping around thing, the future thing, did not get into wall hangs and stuff like that. I don't know. You know, I guess imitation, the greatest form of flattery, uh, so Titanfall must have been pretty daggone awesome to everybody. I really like the game. I wish more people would play it, but uh, it's just hmm, Black Ops 3 just doesn't. It's not hitting the right chord. So I watch a big marketing push on Black Ops 3. Um, all kinds of games coming out. Let's talk about a couple more coming out here real soon. What I want to get is the new Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls Online is supposed to be coming out on the Xbox One here in a few weeks, and I'm really looking forward to that. I like to get on there with friends and. You know, go through the campaigns and stuff like that. It should be really cool. Um, uh, see, Final Fantasy is getting ready to come out here in a few days. Oh, what is this coming out? Um, the Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 looks really good. It's not my style. I like being able to, to play with my friends and things like that. And I wasn't too thrilled when they said it was only a single player option only. So I was really hoping to get more. Um, get more into that with, uh, with friends and, and play. And that's where I thought Elder Scrolls really upped their game from a couple years ago. And having an epic game. I mean, it really was. But, I, you know, I like being social with my friends and playing online. So, uh, Batman Arkham Knight's coming out. I know a lot of people are getting into that. Um,. So uh, Dragon Age is coming out. That's not neither one of those are really my, you know, my forte. The other thing we should find out about is the division. I don't think it's going to come out this year because um, Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Siege came out, and I think Tom Clancy's Division will probably come out next year, maybe early next year. So you're not really overlapping too much. So. See how that goes. This is going on out there. Um, there's a neat little game coming out. What's it called? Uh, but but I'll, I'll get the name here in a minute. It's basically Mega Man 2 for Xbox One. And if you're my age, yeah, you played a lot of Mega Man. It's called Mighty Number no. Nine, and it looks, looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. It just looks like a fun little game. So. Uh, World of Tanks is coming out. That's kind of fun to play. I'd rather have War Thunder. I think that's a better game. Uh, that right now is only on PC. Oh no, it's on uh, PlayStation 4. So, heads up on that. Um, some other games, eh? Really not into. Um, I would love to see a first person um, multiplayer flight sim of some kind. Who knows? Maybe I get lucky at E3. Especially if it's World War II. World War II or Vietnam would be good, either way. So, none of this sci fi fantasy stuff. Just, you know, stick with it. Of course, you got all your sports games coming out and stuff like that. So, should be interesting to see on E3 all the developers. And mostly because this is the time the developers have really had a full chance to develop a game. For an Xbox One, for a PlayStation 4, um, I really think you're looking at you know taking two years, maybe even three, but at least two years to really get a game functioning, you know, for a new platform and stuff like that. So this should be really interesting to see what E3 has. Like I said, I think E3 with the competitions and everything else going on. I think you're going to see a lot of multiplayer-ness. You might, I think the competition between, come on, man. And this guy catches me in reload. Should have stabbed the first guy. Oh, well. Um, that's all right. I get my revenge. So. Oh, you're going to see some thievery here in a little bit. So. <laughs> but I think E3 is going to be really telling this year. It's going to be really interesting to see so so speaking of thievery and stuff and granted I'm shooting at this guy long range with an SMG silenced on top of it 
And that dude comes in with a shotgun. And that's not even his worst theft. That one... Okay, I laughed that one off. The next one... I'll show you. When the next one comes, it's toward the end. You'll see it. So... One thing I've noticed about Call of Duty, since we're in here playing, is that you're not seeing that. See, that's a good sniper shot. Good shot. It's got an area long range. He outgunned me long range with a sniper. Don't blame me a bit. Do not blame you a bit. That's the way snipers are supposed to be played. This, you can get outgunned on a consistent basis by a guy, you know, with a sniper rifle over an SMG. Give me a break. Seriously. Give me a break. There's no way. At point blank range, SMG versus a sniper rifle should be SMG all day. You know, you start getting at range, eh, okay, I'll give you that. And I don't even mind the occasional, okay, where did that come from, you know, the panic. You pull the trigger just because, you know, you're in panic mode and you kill the guy with a sniper rifle. That's fine. Same thing as panic knife. But the difference is between the panic knife and getting quick scoped is simply the fact that the panic knife happens now and again and yes I just let that guy run in there take out the uh, landmine without me having to go do it yes I did the difference there is the simple fact that it doesn't happen on a consistent basis yes I've I've been the beneficiary and the on the bad end of a uh, of a knife. I've been on both sides where I come around a corner, whoosh, you know, there's a guy there, hit the button, click, whoosh, there you go, I got the guy. And then I've been on the other side to where, you know, I, I'm the one coming around the corner, start blazing around a corner, get a couple shots, but he knife kills me. But it doesn't happen on a consistent enough basis to where I'm overly worried about it. Whereas the quick scoping happens all the time. And within that, one thing I've noticed with the Call of Duties is that the older Call of Duties are better than the newer ones. And the reason I say that is not because of the game quality or anything like that. It's who's playing it. You see a lot less of the really bad campers. I mean, you still got them. You saw me kill the one guy who's laying down there right where I'm passing, where I'm running now. And you also have the... Um, all these quick scopers, the modders, the hackers, they're all into the new big bright and shiny thing. And that's what screws all that up. So it's not necessarily the game, sometimes it is, like Ghost, that just was bad. And you want to talk about theft. Yep, speaking of a knife, I was going for a knife right there, and that shotgun guy, he had to shoot right through me to get that. You want to talk about thievery. That was thievery, my friends. That was thievery. Um, <laughs> so, try to go up here and get a couple guys. The game's getting close, getting down to it. And, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I just think it has a lot to do with who you're playing with. And the people who play the game where it's supposed to be played, these games are fun. And nothing like camping out, waiting on a camper. <laughs> Guy was waiting on the camper in his camping spot. Gotta love it. So, Anyways, play the games the way they're supposed to be played. They're a lot more fun that way. That's the lesson there. Thanks a lot for watching. Marty, thanks a lot. I do appreciate it. Silent Mustang, I've got your six.